Well, good evening, Valley Church family, on this Wednesday evening. So good to be with you in our midweek devotion this week. Over the last six months, as we have navigated and traversed the COVID-19 pandemic, as we have experienced the difficulties of lockdown, I'm sure in hindsight, as we sit down and we reflect over this last difficult season, I'm sure many out there would agree that uh, this has been a season in which we have learned many, many lessons and we have benefited much from just a new perspective and a new understanding about priorities and about what we can do and what we can't do. And I think out of all those lessons, I think the, the one truth that has stood out again and again is just the reality that we are not in a position to control very much in our lives. I think we for many years have lived under the illusion that we can really control our world, our environment, the circumstances in which we find ourselves. And I think COVID-19 has shown to us just the opposite of that, that the future is very uncertain and that there is very little that we can control. Many will respond to that new reality with a great sense of fear and trepidation and anxiety. And many over the last six months have experienced the difficulties of that, of just a sense of being out of control, having our freedoms taking away, taken away, having our mobility taken away, uh, experiencing the difficulty of lockdown, and then just realizing again that the future is never going to be the same again. The world as we knew it before lockdown, before this pandemic, is going to be a very, very difficult world. And for many, that induces a great sense of fear and of trepidation and, uh, and a huge burden that they carry. As we navigated this uh, difficult season, uh, many have asked for advice and many have, have experienced the difficulty that they've gone through. And very often when people go through times of difficulty, often a piece of advice that is given is often disregarded and uh, dismissed as being trite and that is simply the advice that one should take each day one day at a time to live one day at a time and many would receive that and say ah oh, but what does that really mean i want to suggest to you that one of the lessons of this last season has been the truth of that statement that in fact we should be living our lives one day at a time. And today I want to talk about, or this evening, I want to talk about embracing our todays. Embracing today. And I want to suggest to you that as we go into the post-lockdown, the post-pandemic weeks and months and years which lie ahead, as we go into an uncertain future, into a world that is going to be very different to the world that we knew before, I want to say to you that trite piece of advice of living one day at a time is going to be an important piece of advice that I would suggest we need to hold on to. And so I want to invite you this evening as we just unpack this a little bit, as we look at a strategy for the future, as we look at how do we apply this advice, living one day at a time, how do we apply that? I want to suggest to you that there are three things that we need to do in order to make this a reality. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to release our past. We need to release our past. In 25 years of, of ministry and even over the last few months, I've realized again that so many of us are not able to embrace our todays. So many of us are not able to live in the blessing of the moment simply because we have been held captive by our past. In order to embrace our today, we need to release our past. And there are three things I want to suggest this evening that we need to do in order to release our past. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to release our past regrets. The things we did wrong, those things we would love to do over if we but yet had a chance to do it. The things we'd like to put right but yet we cannot. 
And I want to suggest to you, when it comes to letting go of our regrets, that not even God can change the past. What has happened, has happened. The mistakes we have made, we cannot undo. We need to be encouraged, however, in the light of our past mistakes, our past regrets. We need to be encouraged by the fact that as we embrace our todays, we do so by embracing the grace that God gives to us today, which covers our past regrets. The prophet Joel gives us a wonderful word of encouragement in Joel chapter 2 and verse 25, when he says of God that he will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. In a very real sense, the prophet is saying that God will undo the past regrets. Those mistakes we have made, those losses we have experienced, that wasted time as a result of that. When we embrace our today, we do so on the basis of God's grace, which undoes many of the mistakes and the poor choices we've made in the past. I've counseled so many people who have been held captive by the regrets of the past past mistakes, past wrong choices. I want to say to you, friend, if you need to let go of your past, it begins by letting go of your past regrets. You cannot change them. The one thing that can change them is the grace of God in our today, which is able to restore what has been stolen from us. So releasing the past begins by releasing our regrets and even as I'm speaking perhaps even now God's spirit is raising in your heart those regrets that you have that have held you captive the invitation today this evening is to let go of those regrets the second thing that we need to let go of in our past are the past offenses that have been committed against us Perhaps we've been unfreely, unfairly treated, we've been hurt, we've been betrayed, we've been offended. And as a consequence of that, we have taken offense and we harbor anger and bitterness in our hearts. And in a very real sense, we have been held captive by the past offenses that have been committed against us. And as a result of that, we're not able to embrace the blessing of today. We're not able to embrace all of what God has in store for us today. God gives us some advice in there at God when he simply says to us that we need to forgive those who have committed sin against us. We need to commit the, forgive those who have hurt us, who have offended us. And in a very real sense, we cannot release our past without forgiving the offense that has been committed against us. For as we forgive, so we are able to forget. So we are able to release that spirit of unforgiveness, that spirit of bitterness and of hang anger that, that holds us captive. Forgiveness is not an easy thing, I know that. But as I preach and I've shared with you so many times at Valley Church, Forgiveness is not about the person who has committed the sin against us, but forgiveness is all about us and what it does for us. And what it does for us is that it releases us from our past. It releases us from the past offense. It releases us from the bondage and the slavery we so often find ourselves in in our todays because we are unwilling to forgive what has been done to us. If we want to release our past and we want to experience the blessing and the freedom of today, not only do we need to release our past regrets, but we must release the unforgiveness. We must release those past offenses that have been committed against us. And as we do that, we are set free and we have the freedom of just embracing the blessing that God has in store for each one of us in our, in our day today. The third thing that we need to release when we release our past is our past blessing and our past successes. 
you say to me, Grant, but surely we should be celebrating our past success, our past blessing. We should be living in the reality of that. And yes, there is an element of truth of that. But there is also a truth that we can live in bondage to our past success and our past blessing. For you see, so often we find ourselves trapped in the mindset that God blessed us in this way in the past and therefore we expect Him to bless us in the same way. We had success in the past in certain areas in our lives and we find ourselves expecting the same success in those same areas. God, however, speaks through His prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 19. And what does He say to His people? What does He say to you and me in our today? He says the following, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? And Valley Church, I really believe that what God is saying for us in this message, and in this verse, is simply this, that I have new blessings in store for you. I have new successes in store for you. As we go into this post-COVID-19 season, as we go into this new world that is going to be so different, don't look back to the blessings prior to lockdown. Don't look back to the past successes. Don't be a captive to what I have done in and through you in the past. But see, I desire, I desire to do a new thing. Therefore, let go. Release the past successes. Release the past blessing. Yes, be thankful. Be grateful. Celebrate them. But be open to the new things that I have in store for you. And so, friends, the first step is to release our past. And we do that by releasing our regrets. We do that by releasing our past offenses and we do it by releasing our past successes and blessing. I'm just reminded that if ever there was a man who needed to release his past then it was the Apostle Paul. He needed to release those past regrets and we know that Paul prior to salvation was the one who persecuted the church. He had the blood of Christians on his hand and as he came to salvation and as God was doing a new thing, he needed to let go of his past regret that he could not undo. Paul also had to let go of his past offense, those who had treated him unjustly. And we know that when he accepted Jesus, he was rejected by the Jewish community, even though he was one of their leaders and one in high esteem. He was unfairly treated by the Romans because as a Roman citizen, he should not have been thrown into prison. He should not have been whipped and treated the way he was. But Paul realized that he needed to let go of his past offenses. Paul also realized that he needed to let go of his past success. And he speaks about the fact that he was a man of high intellect. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. He was... A Pharisee. He was a man of of esteem, of power, of status. And yet he says he considered that nothing compared to what he had in Jesus. He was able to let go of his past success. And in the light of being able to let go of his past regret, his past offense, his past success, what does Paul do? He gives us an amazing piece of advice in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Notice what Paul says there. Forgetting what is behind, I press on. You see, Paul knew what it was to embrace his today. And Paul knew the secret of that because he knew the secret of forgetting what was behind, of releasing his past. And Valley Church family, as we move into this post-COVID-19 season, as we truly seek to embrace our today, it begins with what the Apostle Paul did by releasing your past. 
And my prayer for you, dear friends, and my prayer for me as we come to this new season is that we are able to release our past. That we are able to break the chains of bondage and a captivity that so easily enslave us to our past. I've seen it again and again as I've counseled so many people over the years how they are held captive by the past. As a consequence of that, they're not able to embrace their today and they're not able to move into their tomorrow. It begins, friends, by releasing our past in order that we can embrace our today. But the second thing that we need to do is that we need to release our future. We need to release our future. So many people are held captive by the fear that they have for the future. And none more so as the season we are living in right now. For the future has always been uncertain, but perhaps the future is going to be even more uncertain as we move into a new world, a world which we've never experienced before. And as a consequence of that, so many people of, are robbed of the blessing of today because of the fear that they have for tomorrow and for the, uh, the tomorrows which lie ahead. So many are not able to live in the present blessing of today because of that. Friends, we need, as we have released our past, we need to release our future. And again, I want to give to you three reasons why we need to release our futures. The first reason we need to do that is simply because we were not designed to carry the future. We were not designed to carry the future. Jesus gives to his disciples a wonderful piece of advice uh, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34. Notice what he said. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. In other words, release tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let's stop there a moment. What does Jesus say? Each day has enough trouble for its own. In other words, what Jesus is saying, you have been designed to deal with the trouble for one day. You were not designed. I did not create you to be able to cope and deal with all the troubles of tomorrow and the next day and the next week and the next year. You were designed and I created you to deal with the trouble that you will face today. Therefore, let go of tomorrow. Let go, release your future and deal with the troubles and the challenges and the blessings. Embrace your today. That's what Jesus is saying to us in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Deal with what you have today. Live your life one day at a time. What a, an appropriate piece of advice for us in the challenging season we live in right now. But advice that Jesus gave to his disciples, advice that, is given, that has been given generations down through the years. Jesus says, take your life one day at a time. Why? Because we were not designed to carry the burden of the future. We were designed to carry one day at a time. The second reason why we are to release our futures is that we cannot control the future. We have never been able to, we cannot, and we never will be able to control the future. And if we cannot control it, then it is not ours to carry, then it is ours to release. James gives some wise advice in James chapter 4 and verses 13 through to 17. Notice what he says. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. 
What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. What is James saying to us? He's saying we cannot control the future. Yes, we need to plan. Yes, we need to set plans in place for the future. But we do so with the recognition that even as we plan, we know that the future is in God's hands. That we cannot control the future. And therefore we cannot be held responsible for the future. And therefore we need to release the future. You see, it is an awful burden to carry that which we cannot control. It is an awful burden to take responsibility for that which we cannot control. And friends, it is so easy to be held captive by the future because we seek to control it. And the more we seek to control the future, the more we realize we cannot. And the more frustrated we become, the more fearful we become. And the more we are robbed of the blessing of the present. Yes, we need to be responsible about the future. We need to plan. We need to provide for our retirement and for many other things. But we do so on the basis that it is not ours to control. We do so on the basis that the future can change very quickly. Simply because we cannot control it. The third reason why we are to release our futures is because the future is in God's hands. Did you notice in verse 15 of James 4, what did James say there? In the midst of the reality that we cannot change or we cannot control the future, notice what James says. If it is the Lord's will, we ought to say, we will live and do this or that. What does James say? He is recognizing that the future is all about God's will. For you see, we do not hold the future, but we know the one who does hold the future. You see, the future is in God's hands. And therefore, that should encourage us. And that should be the motivation we have of releasing our futures simply because they are already in God's hands. He is sovereign. His purposes, His plans, His will will be done. As we've seen in this COVID-19 season, Romans 8 verse 28, He will truly work all things for our good. And so I'll ask you a simple question this evening. Would you rather have the future in your hands? Or would you rather have the future in God's hands? We need to release our futures simply because they are in God's hand. Just friends, as we release our past, so we release our future simply because we were not designed to carry the future. We cannot control the future. And then the reality is that the future is already in God's hands. That wonderful Psalm, Psalm 139, David writes then, he says, All your days, all the days ordained for me, were written in your book before one of them came to be. What an encouragement for us to release our futures in order that we might embrace our todays and experience the blessing of our today. And so friends, we've seen firstly that we are to release our past. We are to release our future. And once we have done that, then thirdly, we can truly embrace our today. We can live in the moment. We can live in the present. The way God always intended us to live. The way God designed us to live. How do we do that? And why do we do that? Again, I give you three very simple points as to why we do it. And the first one I've made already. We do it simply because we were designed to live one day at a time. 
You know, when Jesus taught his disciples to pray in that wonderful Lord's Prayer, he taught them to pray for their daily bread, not for their weekly or their monthly or their yearly bread. God desired them to live one day at a time, to trust him, to provide for them one day at a time, to trust them for their daily bread and then tomorrow to trust them for their bread for tomorrow. We saw that when Jesus, or when God journeyed with his people from Egypt to the promised land, and when they were in the desert, God miraculously provided that miracle bread, that manna, for them each and every day. And God told them to collect enough for one day, not for two days, otherwise it would go bad. And again, God was just underlying this, underlining this principle that they were to live their lives one day at a time, trusting God each and every day for their daily bread. We are again told in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 23, that God's mercies are new every morning. You see, God desires to give us grace and mercy just for today, not for tomorrow, not for the next day, but just for today, the troubles we have today, God will give us grace and mercy to deal with those troubles. And when we wake tomorrow, God's mercies will be new. God's grace will be new for tomorrow. God's provision will be new for tomorrow. And then the next day and the next day. Let's not look for grace for our future. But let's each and every morning look for grace for today. We were designed to embrace our today and to release our tomorrow. But secondly, we are to embrace our today because it liberates us to live in the freedom of just being in the moment. You see, when we embrace our today and we release our tomorrow and we release our past, all we need to deal with is 24 hours. In fact, we probably on average sleep for eight hours, so we simply need to deal with 16 hours. And when we are trying to uh, build new habits, we're trying to live better lives, we're trying to be more spiritual, it is far easier to be able to deal with 16 hours than a week, a day, two weeks, three months, three years. Perhaps you, you're trying to be more consistent in having a quiet time, in spending more time with God. It's far easier when the objective is to simply do it today. When you are trying to build new spiritual disciplines like fasting or praying or reading God's Word. Whatever it is, when your goal is simply the next 16 hours, it becomes far easier. It is so liberating because then it is doable. I can simply focus on being able to do what I am required to do today. And then when I start tomorrow, I start all over again. And I begin again. It makes life so much easier. It liberates us from the burden of the past. It liberates us from the burden of the future and allows us to live one day at a time. But thirdly, when we embrace our today, then it puts the responsibility on us to make the most of every day, to make the most of every opportunity that we have in our today. Someone once made this wise statement when he said, remember, you will never finish anything tomorrow that you didn't start today. I know that procrastination in my life has been a huge challenge. Always putting off for tomorrow what I should be doing today. No, when we release our future and we embrace our today, it puts the responsibility of doing today what we need to do today. It was Pablo Picasso, that great artist, who made the following statement. He said, only put off until tomorrow what you are willing to die, having left undone. Friends, if God has placed something on your heart to do today, then do it today. 
because we know God's word tells us that tomorrow is promised to no one. But it empowers us to do today what we need to do today. Again, God's word speaks into this again and again. In Joshua 24 and verse 17, we read there, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Choose this day. And Hebrews 3 verse 7 tells us, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And so, friends, as we move out of this difficult season, as we move into a new uncertain future, I really just have a sense that God is coming with the invitation for us to live truly one day at a time. In reality, that means three things. It means releasing our past. And perhaps even as I've shared with you this evening, you know that you are held captive by your past. Your past regrets, offenses, perhaps your past successes and blessings. Friend, I want to say to you, it's time to let go. Release your past. Perhaps you've been held captive by the fear of the future. God's invitation for you is to release the future. You cannot control it. You are not responsible for it. And the future is in God's hands. We need to release it into his hands. And as we release the past and the future, so we can embrace the present, all that God has in store for us right now. What a, a freedom and a release to know that all we need to do is to deal with today, to experience the blessing of today and to trust God for the blessing that he will bring in our future tomorrows. So friends at Valley Church, I trust that this has been, yes, a challenge, but also an encouragement to you. We need to live in the blessing of today, releasing our past and releasing our future. And I trust that this has been a message of encouragement uh, and a message of hope uh, as we continue to journey uh, in these difficult times. So thank you for the privilege uh, of sharing with you on this Wednesday evening. And um, just as this year draws to a close, I want to just give an invitation to our Valley Church family. Um, as we have been sharing these devotionals on a, on a Wednesday evening, perhaps there are some of you, as you look back over uh, the last six months, there have been some lessons you have learned. There have been some testimonies that you have. Uh, I want to compile a, a, a montage of, of, of lessons learned and of testimonies experienced. If you've experienced something and you want to share something, perhaps for three minutes or five minutes, uh, I'd love to put together a montage of little clips that we will put together uh, and share as a, a Wednesday evening devotional uh, as this year draws to a close. If you are willing to do that and you would like to do it, then please make contact with one of the pastoral staff and uh, we will be in contact with you and we'll be setting that up. Uh, just so that we can bless the whole body uh, of Valley Church with just some of the lessons, some of the blessings and some of the testimonies that each and every one of us are able to share. So please be in contact with us. Uh, we'd love uh, for you to share with us. So friends, let me just close with a prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for just this timeless message of embracing our today. And Lord, as our Valley Church family have heard this message this evening, I just pray that you would enable us to release our past. You would, by your Holy Spirit, you would cut off that which is holding us in bondage to our past. And then, Lord, that you would enable us to release our futures into your hands. Those, that, those bondages of fear and anxiety which rob us of the blessing of today. Lord, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would just cut off that spirit of fear for the future that holds us in bondage. And then, Lord, I just pray that you would enable us to live in the blessing of today. 
And when we wake tomorrow, that we would live in the blessing of tomorrow. I pray that by your Holy Spirit, you enable us to do that. So Lord, just take this word and apply it to our lives now. And may we know your blessing in our todays. We pray this in Jesus' awesome name. Amen and amen. Valley Church family, be blessed. Amen and amen.